I, I show you, I showed you, show you, showed you. Okay. All I was saying, if I demonstrate what I did mathematically, is the following. First, I excite this system with something initial velocity and initial displacement. Okay? Then I found two natural frequencies, omega 1 and omega 2. And then I want to find out the displacement that will be exhibited when I oscillate two degree of freedom system by omega 1. So this is Omega 1. This U1. Okay? And U2 is <coughs> What? And I'm claiming that any displacement, any motion of this two degree of freedom system can be expressed by either this motion or this motion. Okay, that's it. Okay, that completed the chapter four. And chapter 5, in fact. So, <laughs> now you are ready to take a final examination. <laughs> okay, this is a basic concept. Okay? But knowing the basic concept is just the starting point. And we have to know precisely what we can do. Another demonstration I want to give you. You know, depending on mass ratio, Okay. If I have a rather small mass over here, the U1 and U2 vector would be different. Right? Ooh. 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 Okay, I can still have oh, not easy. Okay, the U one and the U two is Not easy. <laughs> but if I have a mass bigger, smaller, then it will be easier.
amplitude of these two mass is different. Why? Okay. Okay, you never see this kind of demonstration at uh, University of Michigan State University, right? You did? Ah, he must be very, be very nice professor. Hmm? This is U1. What? And this is famous. <laughs> Meaning that boundary condition is very important, right? Oh. Therefore, mathematical approach is often more convenient than doing experiment, right? That's why some lazy people want to do something only in mathematical way. But if you just do, I mean, if you just try to understand the mathematical way, then you will lose the physical understanding. Therefore, you have to do mathematical way and physical way, experimental way at the same time. That will provide you uh, better understanding. Okay. I have a big problem. Oh. This is very complicated mathematical problem. But there is a solution, right? There is a unique solution. Only take a time. So if you are patient enough for that. Oh, it's not a unique problem, unique solution. There is a two way to get a solution. I can either rotate clockwise or rotate counterclockwise. And I don't know how... Oh! Okay. Okay. Oof! Dear Dean! Gosh! Often, when Professor Ham has some difficult time, what I can do is ask my graduate student, you solve this. But that's not the way. No. Let's try to understand this approach by using some examples. Okay? Okay, I can erase this part. Example. 